DT. Eliminate paper files with the IoT Smart Connected Scanning Device. Find them at ready, the number four, IDT.com. Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. If you're looking for the latest news, insight into what it means, and the sharpest opinion, there's only one station in Chicago where you can turn, and it's this one. We're AM560, The Answer. Dan and Amy, a lot of golf talk this morning. Uh, close the loop on a couple things. Uh, I got a call about celebrities I've caddied for and uh, top public courses in Chicagoland. This is a good caddy story, too, which we talked a bit about earlier in the show. Backdrop of the BMW this weekend at Olympia Fields. Um, so one of the celebrities I caddied for at Chicago Golf growing up, Mike Ditka. Oh, coach. And fast forward, and a couple of years ago, or for the last couple of years since I joined, I'm at the same club as a member with Mike Ditka in Florida. Oh. So how about that as a... Coming full circle. Yeah, yeah. All right, Top Public Course is getting a lot of responses. I said um, Cantini, I said George Dunn, I said uh, Stonewall Orchard, uh, Cog Hill a lot, you know, Dubs. Yeah, of course, Dubs, but okay. same thing as these yes. other courses. It's not maintained like it should be anymore, I'm sorry to say. You know, it's interesting. Oh. Tri- Chicagoland just doesn't have, like, think about the public golf courses in Wisconsin, oh, our neighbors to the north. They're, gorgeous. And Minnesota? Well, I mean, they're, tourna- they're, but they're tournament quality. I'm talking about right. Aaron Hills and Black Wolf Run, Whistling Strait, Sand Valley. These are all public courses you can get on. Right. And we don't have um, that quality here. It's sort of surprising because we have such great golf in Chicago. Uh, I would, Bull well, Valley. Bull Valley is not public. It's private. Oh, that's right. I just get on because I know somebody. Correct. Yeah, it's It seems like it's public because somebody pays for you to be there. <laughs> so it seems like it's and public here, dad. but it's not. It's and the right. gift that keeps giving for yeah, but, you know. Pops and I. You know? um, the village guy. Village Links in Glen Ellen, where I played all the time growing up, at okay. that 18 course, that was that would be a pro tournament qualifier. Waveland, for sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, it gets nine-hole some... juggernaut. Well, it gets you every time. Got some other suggestions here. Uh, uh, admittedly, in a couple of the courses I haven't played, so I can't really comment. I've heard Shepherd's Crook in Zion is good, but I haven't played it. Uh, da, 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 what do I? Uh, the Glen Club, um, yeah, in Glenview, that's a good public track. Maintenance is still an issue there, though. I got to tell you, uh, Pine Meadow in Mundelein, that's a good track. Okay. So those are some, yeah. So those are you know top top seven or eight there. All right, all right. We got to put the sticks away for a minute here and. Get on to some other business. Big weekend. Yes. Uh, John Podesta, he is the guy that was given, yeah, you know, three or four hundred billion dollars to pass around to uh, Biden friends who happen to be all of the sudden in the clean energy business, particularly in the EV business. And he was asked by um, uh, our friend Phil Wegman from RealClearPolitics.com. Uh, how's that going? You your role as a venture capitalist with other people's money. We have Solyndra was the famous uh, catastrophe during the Obama years mm-hmm. when they were doing the same industrial policy. A EV company, a bus EV bus company called Proterra, seems to be the Solyndra of Joe Obama term three. Since 2004, it only delivered about uh, 550 buses. Uh, and yet it raised $650 million in an IPO, more than three times its annual revenue. There were flashing red lights from the start, the Wall Street Journal reports. The company had a history of defective manufacturing. Costs of the repairs included cracked wheel wells in 2018. Two years later, it discovered laminate cracks near bus door frames. The same year, it issued a recall related to a component that could compromise steering. That's a problem. You know what the solution to all that is? Make Jennifer Granholm a member of your board of directors. Oh, there you go. And before she was energy secretary, she was on the company's board of directors after serving as governor of Michigan. And lo and behold, the taxpayer dollars came flooding in, including from John Podesta. He was asked about that. He said, you know, there's going to be some 
uh, companies that don't work out, but uh, hey, we're doing just as well as the private sector. From day one, I uh, asked uh, that the inspector general convene, and we've done that with under the leadership of the Department of Interior Inspector General, to ensure that each of the grant programs uh, and loan programs had the highest level of, uh, they're independent, but had the highest level of input from the inspector generals to uh, avoid chasing the horse when it's out of the barn, try to make sure that the program design uh, kept the horses inside the barn. Uh, and I think with respect to the loan program, uh, 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 particularly our friends on the other side of the aisle, I talk, talk about Solyndra. Overall, uh, this is a very highly performing program. It returns $500 million to the Treasury, uh, the loan program office at the Department of Energy. It has a 4% failure rate. They're going to be, if you're making loans to new technology industries, you're going to have some things that don't work. You can't have hundred percent record the four percent uh, default rate against those loans is consistent with uh, the highest levels of uh, of the private sector uh, 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 lending uh, standards. Uh, so I think it's operating very well and it's producing a lot of uh, work for the American people. Yeah. Uh, who needs uh, private sector private equity when you can have public sector public equity? Steve Moore, economist, author of Govzilla, joins us. Steve, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning, guys. By the way, I used to play that uh, public course in Evanston. I don't know if you know which one I'm talking about. But oh, the one by the hospital? Um, the yeah. Goat Ranch? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, Canal that Shores is, now, right. and the Ricketts exactly. have taken over. They're redoing yeah. the course, Steve. That's, so not, that's, not, time... a golf, that's not a golf course. Oh, it is a golf course. Yes, it's not up. a golf course. Yes, it is. They're redoing it. Terrible. Steve and Moore, next Steve, time we come in, we're going to go play nine. Steve, Steve, we'll, we'll take you, if you're in Chicago, we'll take you to a real course so you don't have yeah, to defile no. yourself by playing Canal Shore. Exactly. It was, I mean, you'd, you'd hit it over the canal, and the canal was just filled with garbage. And <laughs> yeah. Well, now the canal's I, I haven't blue. been there in a few years. But uh, anyway, that that's my idea of an Illinois public golf course. No, there are uh, some, there's some are quite a little bit better than that. But anyway. Yeah. By the way, I, I don't want to be main dro- uh, a name dropper, but guess where I played golf yesterday, Dan? Uh, Olympia Fields? B- Bedminster. Bedminster. Oh, Are you going to be there uh, Monday for the big announcement? Uh, I was there yesterday. And, did you play uh, with Trump? Way, I did not, but oh. we uh, a bunch of us had dinner with him, and I asked the president, what would you shoot? And he said, a 68. And <laughs> just between us, guys, okay? Just between us, I... Donald Trump is a really, really good golfer, okay? 68. But in please no don't tell chance. Him I said this. No but chance he, he shot 68. 68. <laughs> There's no chance he shot 68. The stories about him uh, are legion about, uh, I mean, he's he's the only guy who gives himself chips. He, he Forget putts. He gives himself chips. Uh, but anyway, that's fine. Yeah, what were you saying, He does Steven? hit the ball a long way. Anyway, uh, I want. I'm glad you brought this subject up about um, – Solyndra and uh, and the the green energy slush fund because I want people to realize we're not thinking about millions of dollars we're not talking about billions of dollars we're talking about trillions of dollars that that uh, John Podesta has control over and it wasn't just Solyndra by the way under Obama I, there were two pages long of failed green energy programs one Fisker did it I could go down the list. Almost as, when he says you don't bat 100 percent, yes they do. Up 100 percent of them failed, and so here we are with these. With, here's the thing: since the late 1970s, when Jimmy Carter was president, we have spent two trillion dollars on green energy in this country, all with federal subsidy money. Two trillion dollars. In 1978, we got six percent of our energy from solar and wind power. Today, we get seven percent. So. But this, all of this money has been a complete waste of money. And the only people who are getting rich off of this are the buddies of John Podesta. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you, if you know John Podesta, you're going to make a lot of money because he's going to invest in your company. That's not the way that a free market system works, folks. It is a slush fund to big Democratic donors. Well, so- even, if, even if Podesta was right. Even even if he was right that you know our failure rate is uh, similar to the uh, most That's successful true. private. Not true. E- even if it was true though, even if it was yeah. true that it's it's it mirrors the most successful private equity firms in the in the world, not true or in the country. It's not true. But even if it was true, so what? 
Well then, if yeah. if if that's right, then why why are you in the business? If you can't do be- if you can't do better than the private sector, then why are we in the business? Yeah, no, I mean, it, and and you know, the the fact is, I actually honestly believe. Oh, let me give you an example of how bad this is. So uh, there's a co- company called First Solar, which is one of the ones that John Podesta has quote, in, I'm using air, air quotes, yeah. invested in, because we didn't invest in it. The government took the money from us and then gave it to for solar. Do you know how much money they're going to get in federal subsidies over the next five years? How much? One company, $10 billion. Not $10 million, $10 billion. Dan, you and I and Amy have to start a, a, a green energy program. Yeah, well, right. yeah, I know. Well, yes, we got yeah. Yesterday was a one year anniversary of Bidenomics, which makes me yeah. laugh. Uh, and of course, the president was celebrating. I don't know what. The Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal initially called my plan Bidenomics. I'm not sure they meant it in a totally complimentary way at the time. <laughs> but guess what? It's working. Ah, uh, there's a sort of OJ. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's working. Um, the costs, are, are you ready for this? And people should listen up. 61% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. But it costs seven hundred and nine dollars yep. more a month to live the way we yep. lived before Biden was in office. We think about with the gas prices you, and the grocery yep. bills. So yep. I don't know what they're celebrating. Yeah. Uh, so Amy, I've been thinking about this because you and I have been talking about this week after week. So I want to I want to um, invent something called the Amy Index. Okay. Okay. And you know what the Amy Index is going to be? The things that you have to buy every week or month. You have to pay your rent. You have to buy your groceries. You have to buy the Cheerios or what was it, Cocoa Krispies or something that you said you were buying. Uh, uh, Fruity but, Pebbles know, the, was the, the, $11.99. Yeah. Uh, why, and, how old as, are you? Why are you buying Fruity have, Pebbles? Well, I have boys. <laughs> like, that are 20. 19 and 18. Yeah. Don't. But – but here's my point. You know, I was so I was talking to my beloved wife, Anne, the other night, and she was saying exactly what Amy is saying. What the hell are they talking about? Inflation isn't three or four percent; it's twenty percent. Yes. And, you know, most most you know grocery items are like tw- double what they were five years ago. Or triple. And so we need to start the Amy index, which is the things you have to buy. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay your utilities. You have to fill up your gas tank. You have to buy the Cocoa Krispies. You have to buy the you know the the ground beef and those things are up not three percent not five percent not ten percent fifteen or twenty percent and that's why a lot of these people get angry at me you know when, when i say oh you know the inflation rate's four percent they what the hell is steve Moore talking about the inflation rate isn't four percent and so amy let's get together and we're gonna we're gonna start the amy index and you tell me what you buy regularly and we'll put those in the index and we will circulate that throughout the country Okay. All right. We could put goldfish on the list too. Uh, things. Uh, <laughs> things well, a jug of goldfish yeah. is now twelve dollars. Maybe we should talk about. That maybe we should talk, start talking about the things Amy's buying at the supermarket too while oh. we're at it. <laughs> Don't govern me at the grocery yeah, store, right. Dan. All right. So um, there's other potential other issues too. I don't know. You know, we've, we've been looking for some. Uh, pull back as uh, all of the funny money that was printed sloshes out throughout the system and um, uh, and, and the, the Fed stops their asset purchases, continues to hike rates, and uh, yep. we have a market correction of sorts. Um, Michael Burry, he's the big short investor who made, you know, a billion dollars uh, yep. betting on the housing crash. Mm-hmm. He has uh, put uh, $1.6 billion on puts against the NASDAQ and the S&P. He expects, obviously, a market crash. Is he wrong? God, I, one thing I cannot do is predict what the stock market is going to do, because if I could predict that, Dan Amy, I would not be on your radio show right no, now. I know. I know, but I mean, he's... But he's, but I mean, he's, 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 he's like, he's like, you know, he's like hammering the sell button, right? I know he is, but... You know, look, I, I have to say this, to be completely honest. The economy is, is right now at this moment is doing you know a lot better. I mean, the latest forecast for the GDP growth for this quarter is like looking at 5%. So all of a sudden we're seeing this kind of spurt of growth. And I can't, I can't tell you why that's happening. I think it's mostly just all this government money that's being poured into the economy. Wall Street Journal had a pretty good editorial about that. I think it's today or in yesterday's paper. But you can't keep doing that. You can't keep stimulating a con- quote. I mean, again, stimulate is their word, but 
most of the the additional spending that's going on in the economy right now is due to all this money that the government is spending and borrowing. And I got to tell you, you can't keep doing that without expecting uh, a crash. And so what I just don't know is when that's going to happen. But the, well, it's, it's almost like a, it's almost like, you know, a, a drug high. You know, you get from yeah. taking cocaine, you feel really good, but guess what? You crash. And that's, I think, what's going to happen with this U.S. economy. I don't know. I mean, you know, the modern monetary theorists are feeling their oats now. It's like, yeah, you pour, but it does, you can print all this money. Yeah, it does have a bit of an inflationary uh, impact, but then you uh, put the Fed on the job, raising rates, and then the inflation's down. The economy keeps clipping, clicking along. So uh, Paul Krugman and the MMT boys are saying, you know, we can... We can turn the dials and pull the levers in such a way to keep everything clicking along nicely so that people are rather content. That's where we're at now. Yeah, except that we have a you know thirty two trillion dollar debt. And uh, that's, that's somebody that's else's problem. Uh, somebody yeah, else. right. Exactly. No, that's what they say. No, don't worry about that. You know, we could just that's that's our grandkids' problem. Right? Right. We don't have to worry about that now. Well, all right. Uh, well, so we'll see if you know, the I'm reality check. It. I'm not buying it. we got to get back to fiscal sanity, and we need the growth of the economy to come. In other words, we're growing the economy in all the wrong places. When we put John Podesta in charge of the U.S. economy, who's a political hack. I mean, you know, John's a smart guy, but he, oh, he doesn't know anything about business. He knows politics, and he's, he's you know, basically taking your and my money and Amy's money, and he's rolling the dice on it. Uh, well, right. But, I, you know, it's just one of those things where you have half the country now, not only even when things uh, are delivered to their front door, like higher prices for those goods and yeah. services they need on a rolling basis. Um, it still doesn't matter. So, I mean, unless yeah. there is a uh, unless they get hit by with an economic two by four, it's just they're going to listen to that. Don't worry about 32 trillion. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about the money in. Don't worry about the interest rates. We're going to we got it all under control. Just uh, put yeah. your hand, put uh, your well, life in our hands. No problem. Yeah, and there's one person who has actually told the truth about the U.S. economy in the Biden administration. You know who that is? What's the dog's name? Kamala. Kamala. She's oh. the one who said mm -hmm. last week the average American has four hundred dollars in the bank. <laughs> four hundred dollars, yeah. and she's right. You know, yeah. the Americans don't have any savings right now. Amy, credit card debt went over a trillion dollars last month. A well, trillion people dollars. People are using credit, credit card cards debt. at the grocery store. Oh. Yeah, well, the That's government fun. doesn't. Why can't I? At some point, yeah. at some point we're going to run out of plastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steve Moore, economist, GovZilla author. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. I tell you, I get no 